This Week in Lab, we'll be talking about the purity of our aspirin that we synthesized in the previous weeks, and we'll be trying to figure out how pure it is using titration. So if you remember when we made our aspirin, we made it with salicylic acid, which has that phenol group that you see outlined in purple. And we already did the ferric chloride test, which kind of gave us a hint as to how pure our aspirin was. So we tested a bunch of different samples, including commercial aspirin, um, pure acetyl salicylic acid, which is also aspirin. And then we also tested the aspirin that we made and recrystallized as well as salicylic acid itself. And since we have already done this, um, we're not gonna put it again in the video. But part one on your report sheet asks for those specific results. So for that, you just need to state the color that was observed in that um, test tube with each of those compounds. So if you don't remember, then you can look back on the video for lab eight, and that will tell you um, what those colors were. And so remember that the test um, turns purple when salicylic acid is present in your sample. And so if you think about it, if there's still salicylic acid in your sample, that means that not all of it reacted in the reaction with acetic anhydride. So that may mean that your sample's not totally pure. So yeah, we're going to skip this in the video. So make sure to go back to the um, lab eight video if you didn't already write down the colors of each thing. And then that'll be for part one, you'll just put the colors down and it'll ask you what the colors mean. So for our reaction, remember for titrations, we use an acid and base and we end with a salt and a water. So on the left is our aspirin, the acetyl salicylic acid. And then we are going to titrate with our sodium hydroxide um, solution that we standardized in the last lab. And then we will end with a complex that is termed a salt because we have a sodium, the Na ion, that is um, associated with our new compound. And then we'll also be making some water. So our experiment is pretty simple this week. We are going to use our standardized sodium hydroxide solution to titrate our aspirin. And from doing that, we can figure out how pure our aspirin is, which I'll talk about in some later slides. So one important piece of information that you need to know from last week is the molarity of that sodium hydroxide solution. So to give you a hint, it should be around 0.2 molar, that's moles per liter. And so you calculated that last week. So use that value for your calculations. And an important thing to note about this experiment, where we don't wanna to add too much of this when we're titrating, because um, that can make the purity a little too high. Um, if we add too much of the sodium hydroxide, it might throw off our calculations. So we're really gonna be paying attention to the color of the solution when we're titrating. And so we're gonna titrate using our recrystallized aspirin and a commercial aspirin tablet. So the calculations for this, um, first you're gonna find the theoretical moles so that is just a simple taking the mass of your aspirin that we are going to titrate with or titrate and then just dividing it by its molar mass. And that's going to be your theoretical moles for that. And then the actual moles of aspirin is the same number as the moles of your NaOH because in the chemical formula, you remember that it's a one-to-one -one ratio between the aspirin and the sodium hydroxide. So to find the moles of NaOH, you multiply your 
molarity that you just calculated last week times the volume that you titrate with. So remember to turn those volumes into liters because you want to cancel out the units and then end with just moles. So once you found your moles of sodium hydroxide, then those are the same moles of aspirin that you actually ended with. And once you have the actual and theoretical moles, you can divide them by each other like this to find the percent purity of your aspirin. So you want those numbers to be as close to one as possible, and then you'll get 100% purity. So that's what we're trying to figure out with this lab. Just some notes about your report sheet. Um, it asks for the volume of NaOH used, and you're going to need to use that value in your calculations. So for that, just use the best value. So the best value can be a few things. One thing is maybe the titration that had the lightest pink color. Um, and if that's too difficult for you to tell from the video, then maybe you can just average the two trials or um, another, if there's another reason that makes sense to you for the best value, you can just use that. But it will ask you, why did you pick the best value? And you have to explain it. So make sure you explain that as well. And then um, once you have that volume, you calculate the moles and then um, the percent purity like I just showed you. And that's what we will end with in this lab.